everybody, and welcome to the Positively Dizzy Phone-In Show. I'm your host, Kimberly Bouchard, and also the author of the Positively Dizzy book series, where this show stems from. Thanks for patiently waiting by. Sorry, we're a little bit late. First time, hopefully the last time, but I was actually stuck in traffic earlier, so it kind of moved everything. I want to say a big hello to Stephen and Scott, my husband Jacques, and Donna, who's joined us tonight. Guys, I can't get over some of the things that transpired in the last few days, and I'll get to that in a moment. I first want to wish a happy Canadian Thanksgiving to all my Canadian family and friends and listeners. Uh, this is your day, and I remember this day fondly from my time in Canada, growing up in Canada, and I can't wait for our American Thanksgiving coming right around the corner, and happy Columbus Day to all my family and friends here in the U.S., Guys, you know, I always have said that it's the people of Disney that make Disney. And I can't even describe uh, in, in just a few words what happened and how this, that whole premise of the people of Disney make Disney. But I'm going to give it a whirl. This weekend, I was actually in Anaheim and I took my husband to Disneyland for his very first Disney experience that I'll get to later because I got to just tell you about some of the things that happened over the weekend. I was a guest and a vendor at the Disney Anna Fan Club Convention in Anaheim. And Saturday morning, I had the great privilege to be a part of uh, uh, the whole celebration of Legacy Awards to two dear friends of mine, Mike and Patty Peraza, wonderful animators. Uh, you can check them out, look them up. I mean, Mike's got his art all over. Mike and Patty both have done so many amazing things to bring us the magic on screen. And uh, I just thought I would, um, would tell you about something that happened. Uh, well, not just something, a lot of things that happened uh, during that time. Hi to Ivy. Hi to Marisette. Thank you for joining me. So in the spirit of things, Mike was supposed to get the Legacy Award because he is the concept artist. He's created, he's been involved and created Ariel, Darkwing Duck, DuckTales, uh, you know, so many things he has been involved in. And Patty has been right there beside him uh, as an effects um, animator as well. Actually, the first female effects animator with the Walt Disney Studios. And they were only going to give Mike the award. That was kind of the big thing. But they surprised Patty, his wife, with the award too. And the look on her face, I just absolutely loved it. It was one of those moments that I will never forget of genuine surprise and so well-deserving of these awards. Uh, another thing that I have to share with you. So there's a few people that I had known um, there before. So Bill Rogers is the voice of Disneyland. So if anybody's ever gone to Disneyland or if anybody's called my cell phone and listened to my message, you will hear Bill Rogers on that. And his lovely wife, Cammie Dixon, is the voice that opens the uh, California Adventure in uh, at uh, Disneyland, Disney Anaheim. And they were there also. So what, there were two other people that I met. A very, very, probably the closest friend of Talking Mickey was there. His name is Brett Ivan, and he is an amazing, amazing person. Bill Farmer, very, very close friends with Talking Goofy was there. Guys, the number of us in the room, I don't know, there must have been about a hundred of us in the room got to experience an amazing experience that I will never, ever forget. And I wish I could have filmed it, but I, I was so taken off guard. On the stage there, it was, we were just in a nice little called Magic Kingdom Ballroom, actually, at the Disneyland Hotel. And there was Brett, there was Bill, and Bill, and Cammie, and Mike was hosting this particular panel on the stage. 
And some, something that is a real running joke, whenever Mike, is, Mike Press is such a, a, a clown, he is just an amazing guy. When he is with Bill and Cammy, when they're with Bill and, and Cammy, it's always Bill Rogers' birthday. So even when they were here a couple of years ago, you know, when somebody asks, uh, you know, if you're on a tour or whatever, anybody in the house that has a birthday? Well, Bill always has the birthday. Mike always says it's Bill's birthday. At any rate, we, in the spirit of celebrating Mickey's 90th birthday, had the great privilege to see and hear Mickey singing live Happy Birthday with Goofy joining the song, the Happy Birthday song, and Bill, the announcer of Disneyland, joining in the Happy Birthday song, and Cammie, the announcer for Disney's California Adventure, coming in in a soprano, and Mickey started singing Happy Birthday to Me when Goofy continued the song and they ended up together. It was the most amazing experience to see and hear the voices of these incredible characters I love dearly. I mean, Mickey has always got a soft spot in my heart. So does Goofy, bless his heart. And Donald Duck, of course, is my guy. But that was so, so amazing. I was so privileged to see. Another thing that happened, um, and I, I, I guess as a vendor and a guest, I didn't, I kind of didn't really know who else was going to be around. And there were some incredible, pe incredible people I got to meet. Uh, so Sherry was the original Mouseketeer back in the day. And I got to meet her, chat with her, and she is actually a very lovely, lovely down to earth, uh, wonderful woman. And we had such a great time, had some photos together and she's just a little thing, you know, and just so vibrant, so full of life. She still carries that Disney magic with her. And another person I got to meet was a woman named Margaret Carey. Margaret Carey is actually what they call the original Tinkerbell. She is the one that waltz, uh, that the studios uh, mimicked her moves, created her um, persona off of. And I want to show you, we got our daughter um, a picture of Margaret Carey. And I'm going to see if you can, I hope you can see it. So up here, Margaret signed it. And she said to Alexi, Faith, Trust, and Pixie Dust. And here's Margaret Carey right here, posing and you can see some of the, the film crew uh, filming her. This lady is 90 years old and she is still a spitfire. She is the sweetest person, tiniest little thing. And don't get fooled by her sweetness because she is sweet and sassy and she is Tinkerbell through and through. I will tell you that. Uh, and, and something that she shared with me that I want to share this story because it's it's just a little bit of pearls of wisdom from Tinkerbell and it came out of nowhere I remember when we were just chat we chatted several times over the weekend and she said Kimberly she said this this is a amazing little tidbit about twins and the twin story goes along like this. She said that their father, and, and it's just a story, but it's got a message. And I want us all to kind of think about this. But she said, there's these twins and their father asked them to come out to the barn and shovel this pile of manure. He handed both his sons these shovels. One son was really upset and did not want to partake in any uh, shoveling of the manure to make it family friendly here. So he stopped off all angry. Surprising the father, the second twin, got right in there, shoveled like no tomorrow, cute, fast, furious. And his dad asked me, he said, what are you doing? Well, how come you are shoveling all this stuff on your own? And he said, well, there's gotta be a pony in here somewhere. And I just laughed at that. And I laughed at the thought that Tink is 
teaching me a little lesson here. So sometimes the attitude, well, I should say all the times, it's your attitude towards things that can make such a difference. And I, I will always remember that for some reason now because it's Tinkerbell that told me that little story. So I just I just wanted to share those little little that little story that she shared with me. Some other things that uh, transpired this weekend. I, I told you that, you know, what does um, Sherry and Nightmare Before Christmas and a very goofy Mickey song have in common? Well, all three of these came together over the weekend at the Disneyland Hotel. And when I say three, these three things. There was many, but those are just three that I wanted to talk a wee bit about. So the Nightmare Before Christmas was presented by, um, he's actually another author and, and speaker, Dave Bossard, who also did Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. But what was very interesting is we got to find out a lot of the history about the making of the movie as well. If any of you don't know, the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland has a special holiday theme from September, October into November, and it's the Nightmare Before Christmas. Guys, I absolutely loved that Haunted Mansion overlay. It was incredible with the Jack Skeleton uh, theme uh, and Nightmare Before Christmas theme. I, I loved every moment of it. Something that was very interesting is the, the people that actually created all the stuff that went into the Haunted Mansion for that particular showing of, of the um, Nightmare Before Christmas, which gets stored in a lot of places in the Haunted Mansion, which is kind of hard to believe that there's storage in there. Anyways, it was a company called Garner Holt. Garner Holt is the name of the person. And uh, we had seen some, some slides. I don't know if you guys have ever been to this place, but there's a tree in the uh, ballroom where the ghosts are dancing and, and you know, they're celebrating a birthday. But there's this massive, massive tree. It looks like it, like a dead Christmas tree or whatever. And it's 25 feet tall. So basically, I would be only considered like on the lower, the lower area of the branches. And it had to be hauled in by parts. And one thing that was nerve wracking to get that tree in was the fact that they had to stay away, of course, from the glass. Because when you look into the that ballroom where there are, the ghosts are dancing, there's actually panes of glass in there that work the photography so that you can see the ghosts dancing and all those special effects. And one pane of glass, if they would have broken it, cost about a million dollars. So if anybody's wondering why ticket prices are the way they are, it's because things to be created are very expensive. At any rate, I loved the, the Haunted Mansion. We managed to go twice and I'll tell you why. So we had a ride experience, an attraction experience. And uh, by the way, I will be talking more about the Nightmare Before Christmas Haunted Mansion Trick or Tea, the Halloween, really fun Halloween tea I had at the Disneyland Hotel uh, on a show in October. I want to get a little bit closer to Halloween to share that with you. But at any rate, uh, the, the whole uh, time at Disneyland was absolutely amazing. My husband had never been there before. And uh, the, the thing about Disneyland that was so unexpected for my husband because he had only been to Walt Disney World. And you all know that the castle is a little bit different and it's sized a bit different in Disneyland. And when he got in, he was kind of shocked at the size. And of course, the castle in Disneyland is actually flipped around backwards. And I heard a story from someone this weekend. I, I talked to so many people. I can't remember who told me about it. But apparently when the model was mocked up for Disneyland, in the center, of course, was the castle. And someone came along, lifted the castle up, took a look at it, and placed it down the wrong way, the opposite way. 
Well, Walt comes into the office and he and 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 where the the whole um, mock up is of Disneyland, and takes a look at it, and says, you know, I kind of like it. So that's why you have that castle in Disneyland turned around, all because somebody happened to, out of curiosity, pick it up, take a look at it, and put it down the wrong way. We believe it or not, never had a chance to go through the castle. Uh, uh, that is, uh, you know, in, in the, uh, uh, in the theme park there, because there were so many other things we had to learn and go around to. But before I go on, I want to welcome, uh, Anthony, my cousin from, uh, uh, Canada has joined and Mike has joined. Thank you for joining me, you guys tonight. So we are on the Splash Mountain attraction. It took a lot to get Jacques on there because he didn't want to get wet. And I thought, you know what? I've been on that one. It's a bit different. It's single right, single seat. You're not beside each other. You're behind each other, uh, which is kind of interesting because when you're holding on, even though there's bars inside, thank goodness the lady in front of me was friendly because I was kind of holding on to the seat. And um, I was, <laughs> you know, you're kind of touching the other person, but um, she was friendly enough and we got chatting because she's coming to Seattle in a few weeks. But anyways, so we're on this ride. I'm getting all ready. We're getting ready for that first little drop. And we're not going anywhere. We stop. And we're just kind of enjoying the sunshine and the view a little bit. And we're still not moving. And I think, okay, something's off here. And uh, what uh, what we are going to uh, have happen to us next totally took us by surprise. And uh, the, the, the attraction broke down. I'd never been on Splash Mountain that broke down before. So we had to wait in there. And a cast member came along and helped us. Each of us individually out of the boat, we weren't allowed to step up, stand up or anything. We had to, so, and we had to squeeze up against the wall, which is really, really cool. And so we, I took a photo just of us on the outside of the wall, but nobody was allowed, of course, to take photos uh, behind the scenes and that. So that was really cool. So what happened is we actually got a free pass to any of the other uh, rides, except for Space Mountain. And uh, it, it was really cool because we ended up with two um, passes of surprise passes uh, uh, at, at actually at that time. And I have just been told for some reason that my husband has a surprise for me. Uh, I've got to sort of interrupt the podcast a little bit. I don't know. This is kind of bizarre. I'm kind of surprised, guys. I don't know what's going to happen here, but I... I was told that I have a surprise coming up here. Uh, it's uh, signed by the original Tinkerbell. Okay, so I don't want to cry, but I have a husband that is pretty amazing. I got Margaret Carey's book that she signed to me for me. Oh my gosh. Okay, so. Uh, so I, I'm sorry. I'm just so shocked, actually, right now. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I'm sorry. I just, oh, I got to get myself together. This is the book. This is Margaret Carey's book, and uh, my husband did something kind of sneaky, and uh, went went behind the scenes and uh, got got me her book that um, she signed, and uh, it goes for Kimberly. Margaret Carey and Tinkerbell, blessings, and uh, holy cow, uh, I'm totally shocked and uh, surprised uh, because um, that was just really unexpected. She wasn't even selling books there, and uh, it's really interesting. Her son, uh, Eric Norquist, was at our table um, at dinner. And he was just a real character. He was a producer in Hollywood and he does all sorts of things now in his retirement. And we got along really well. My husband and him particularly got along really well. So my husband just did that behind the scenes. And um, I'm, I just, I'm so shocked actually. I only found that out because my son, my tech guy here, said papa's got a surprise and you got to announce some surprise well i'm telling you i'm surprised oh my word oh okay i know what i'm reading tonight 
and uh, pretty excited. Actually, um, Margaret's going to be um, in one of my books, and uh, so is Sherry the Musketeer. They were just absolutely lovely, and I don't even think I have any tissues in here, but um, I got a great husband that likes to surprise me, and I didn't expect to be surprised on air, but anyways, where was I? Disneyland. So, uh, Disneyland is very different than Walt Disney World, and particularly the Fast Passes. We paid um, an extra $10 to have what they call the Max Passes, and it gives you the opportunity to book a Fast Pass online because Disneyland is, you know, a neighborhood theme park with everybody's that everybody is a pass holder. And, uh, excuse me, everybody's a pass holder. And so some things don't have uh, fast pass ca capabilities. And at any rate, we had our haunted mansion fast pass. That's the first one we booked because we thought, you know, I wanted my husband to experience that. And we went on parts of the Cabri and there was no light up. And it was really, that was really cool too. So that was our first uh, attraction we went on that day. But what we discovered is as soon as we got off this, we were notified that our uh, we had been given um, an all day kind of anytime, anywhere pass because our Haunted Mansion um, attraction had, uh, it had broken down. So they automatically give you a pass to do something else. The only one that they will never allow you to go on is Space Mountain, unless you're on Space Mountain already. And it was so cool. So that's how come we got to see the Haunted Mansion twice, which as I say, I really love. That the Pirates of the Caribbean was a real neat surprise for us too. Actually, that was the first time I had been on it in many, many, many years. I couldn't even remember actually uh, the last time. Maybe I was, oh boy, I don't know, 30 years ago? I'm not sure. But anyways, that Attraction doesn't have a fast pass and the lineup is outside, which makes sense because California is not like Florida. You don't have the downpours as frequent as Florida for sure. And it's really cool because inside you've got a restaurant kind of like um, the at the Mexican Pavilion, you know, how you've got the uh, restaurant there and the three caballeros. But this one had the restaurant and it was kind of like you're on the bayou. And of course, the restaurant is called Blue Bayou. And then it gets into the pirate theme and it was different. And the drop is much longer than the drop at um, Walt Disney World. So that was really neat to experience. We also went on the uh, Indiana Jones ride. And it's kind of reminded me of the dinosaur ride, but it was Indiana Jones based. And something that happened in there, which was kind of fun uh, and, and interesting, which was kind of good because um, I was a little getting a little, not motion sickness, but I was kind of getting a little jostled around a bit more than I wanted. But on the ride, it actually stopped six times. And uh, the Jeep was still kind of moving around, but it did actually give me a chance to kind of get my bearings. So we did the Indiana Jones uh, ride as well. So we just, we just really, really had a really uh, fun time that day and experienced some of the, the goodies there uh, Halloween is always a big deal for uh, particularly Magic Kingdom and Disneyland. Although I must say uh, it's really changed in a sense that more and more people are dressing up and I'm talking pretty darn elaborate costumes. And I did notice, I mean, we went to the Halloween party last year actually at Walt Disney World and our first time was uh, when we were... Oh, gee, I think it was like 11 years ago. And we were at Walt Disney World. And honestly, we were like the only, I think there was like only a few of us families that actually had dressed up for it. And so we kind of felt a little inconspicuous because there was, uh, there was, um, there was a lot of uh, people around, but not as many dressed up. It's changed. Everybody is dressing up, and particularly at Disneyland. Well, it, it's like the sky's the limit on these. It's like you're in that Hocus Pocus movie, you know, because actually we saw the three Hocus Pocus uh, witches there. Uh, and it was just fantastic. And we were just leaving because we weren't going to attend that party since I had the Saturday, Sunday engagements going on. But on our way out, we actually ended up seeing Colonel Saunders, um, a little bit of 
a younger version and I had a really quick quick chat with him and and uh but on our way out we had a lovely um meet up with somebody that you guys all may know uh his name is Jeff Reitz and Jeff has gone to Disneyland consecutive days over 2000 consecutive days his story actually is in the fourth book that's coming out at Christmas but I actually met up with Jeff and his lovely girlfriend, Karen, uh, that evening before we were leaving the park. And it was Jeff's 2,470th visit to Disneyland. It was absolutely outstanding. Now, Jeff goes, but he doesn't go for more than maybe an hour or two or three. Just he walks around to get some exercise, just enjoy the sights and sounds. Uh, rather than sitting home and watching television or something, he goes to the park. And they were so lovely to show us around and tell us a few little inside things that uh, we wouldn't have known other otherwise. Then we had a full, full day. And of course, the Halloween goodies that are out, the desserts and things like that. I will just tell you a little bit about that because it, it was uh, quite an interesting taste experience that we had. And uh, one of the things that we had were the beignets, the uh, little uh, donuts, which you will like from New Orleans that uh, are, are fried. And there's like a pound of powdered sugar put on all of them, but they had pumpkin spice. And I actually posted on Facebook, Oh my gosh, you guys, they are so good. But I think that I might be able to mimic the flavor with the powdered sugar and put some of the pumpkin spice um, flavor that you can get powdered wise uh, in, in there too. So I'm going to kind of try that. Um, I'm not sure if I'll know how to make a beignet, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. At any rate, we also had, um, we weren't too hungry for a big sit down dinner, but we wanted to try something that we never tried before. And we had Halloween. I think it was called Halloween hot dogs or something like that. If my husband's on here, maybe he can remember. At any rate, it was the best hot dog I'd ever had. This hot dog had meatballs, uh, the tomato sauce, like a pasta sauce, and a white uh, cream cheese sauce on the hot dog. Holy cow, that was a meal in itself. And it was so delicious. So if anybody ever wants to try one, it actually tastes good. We also got something that I think they might have Walt Disney World. And it was uh, the mac and cheese hot dog. We were just like, we felt like kids, you know. We just thought, well, we'll just try these. So we each got one and split split them in half and tasted it. And you know what, guys? Mac and cheese on a hot dog is pretty darn good too. Especially when you're a little bit hungry. At any rate, we had an amazing time at Disneyland. And I was really fortunate that uh, we could uh, spend that that day together. Uh, we we couldn't see uh, California Adventure not this time, but we will come back when we bring the kids with us this time and check it all out. Um, another thing that was kind of interesting that that uh, you know you never know uh, the events or who's going to be signing or things like that. And uh, if if any of you know, I don't have it with me right now, but it's the seat belt. Um, Harvey bags, the, the Disney Harvey bags, like they, they stand up to everything. And the, actually the designers were at downtown Disney signing the Halloween ones. And I didn't buy one, but I, cause I, I do have a couple of Harvey bags, but it was really kind of neat to see the designers there and who they were, who, who, cause I didn't even realize, um, that they were kind of a separate entity from Disney themselves, but they were, they were really lovely, um, to say hello to. And, uh, another thing that, uh, happened actually, again, I just have to bring it back to the people of Disney. And again, you never know who you're going to meet. And it was last week, my, uh, one of my sons and I, we just, uh, he drove, uh, us to the local burger joint called cloud nine burgers and they make their own like homemade sauces, homemade fries, things like that. And I was standing there and I saw this guy um, with a gray uh, t-shirt and it had Mickey, a large Mickey on the back. Um, and it had, so it had the Mickey ears in black, but then the silhouette of Seattle in the middle. I thought, gosh, that's a really different shirt. You know, I was, so I asked him, I said, where did you get your shirt? And it was actually for a special event he actually works for Disney, Disney corporate, 
um, because uh, some of them are in Seattle. I don't know if I'm allowed to say too, too much about that, but we had a really nice conversation. He was there with his two little boys getting some ice cream. And so you never know. You never know who you're going to see. I want to say hi to my daughter, Alexi, who's joined me tonight too. Alexi, I showed them the Tinkerbell um, thing that we got you guys, uh, that we got you uh, for uh, a, a little souvenir. We did get our sons a souvenir when we were there, but I'll show you that closer to my Halloween um, podcast because it, it kind of follows with that. Uh, another thing I wanted to share with you, again, at the breakfast, I was so, so at the Disneyland Hotel Saturday. I was at a breakfast uh, till 1.26 in the afternoon and I ran downstairs to the tea, the trick or tea was at 1.30 and then kept, kept running the rest of the day to the evening. And the uh, Disney Anna fan club put on this beautiful dinner and breakfast and at the dinner, I can't even remember if it was at the breakfast too. No, it was at the dinner. There was some silent auctions going on and it was absolutely lovely because uh, they were supporting Ryman Arts, uh, supplying um, opportunities for classes for people, for children, uh, young people, I should say, that couldn't afford art supplies or art classes. And you should check them out. It's called Ryman Arts, R-Y-M-A-N, and a really lovely um, charity. And uh, they had different things that you could bid on. Well, I always like to support the arts and I like to support different um, organizations that I can in a silent auction. And when you partake in silent auctions, it's often things you can't get out anywhere. So I'm not sure if you can see up behind my left shoulder, but there's actually a cap and I'll, I'll have to tell you more about it uh, another day. But Mark Walsh, who worked on Incredibles, he actually signed it and I met um, a friend of his who was the photographer at the event. So that was kind of cool. We got that for our artist son. And then, of course, I'm a Donald fan and I'm going to just reach over here very carefully. And I hope you can see this. I'm going to show you this because it was the coolest thing. You know, I'm going to put it right up to the camera. But these are the Donald Duck um, 70th birthday pins of Donald Duck and I was thrilled to get them in this box and and you can just see up close all the different Donald Duck uh, pins the television the army Donald the just really really neat so I I don't collect pins per se anymore um, not that I, I I mean I just uh, my kids would do the whole pin trading thing and that and then I would just get pins that I kind of liked, you know, I didn't have, I didn't match the sets, but that was really, really cool for me to, um, to do. Uh, one other thing I wanted to share with you that I got, because at the Disneyana on Sunday, where I was a vendor, there's a lot of, uh, people that sell collectible Disney things, um, paintings, pictures, things like that, things of that nature. And uh, there was a lady across the way that had some interesting things. And of course, I'm always, uh, I don't know, I always look out for Donald stuff because it it seems a little bit more difficult to uh, to get. And I want to show you this because I actually have a Mickey like this and was pretty thrilled to get this as well. So this is Space Donald. And I thought it was so cool because it actually, it has a pin at the bottom of his foot and it still has the tags from the 50th anniversary. And so we've got, I've got Space Donald and I've got Space Mickey. I didn't think about bringing Space Mickey into it, um, but I'm going to add Space Mickey and Space Donald onto my shelf back there because I just thought it was really, really cool. So I actually picked this this up uh, on Sunday from one of the vendors there myself. Um, and uh, if any of you have heard before, one of my um, things that I, I mean, I'm 
as you know, I love Disney and passionate about that, but I also love the space program. And it was my dad that had introduced me to the space program. And one of the stories actually in the second um, book is called A Friendship Forged. And it was, I had I explained about it more in another podcast, so, but I'll just summarize here. I actually, uh, we had a Disney VIP experience for the day, uh, which was really cool. I hope to have one again one day because I know what I would do next time uh, in addition to what I did when we met our astronaut friend. And uh, it was all because of this Disney experience. We had won a silent auction and it had with an astronaut at Magic Kingdom for a day. Well, I was all in. Even though we lived 2,000 miles away, I'm like, yeah, we're doing this. We're going to figure this out. And uh, so we had a great, great time with him that day behind the scenes. And he wanted to keep in touch, and which was really fun. We do. We we talk all the time when we have dinner when we're at Walt Disney World. Um, we go out to see them. And uh, it just really touched my heart that actually Donald Duck, who is my guy, is dressed in a spacesuit. So I thought that was kind of fun. At any rate, uh, I don't know if I'm going to have any callers. I think I forgot to tell you guys the number to call in is 844-483-4763. If you guys want to call in and share um, a quick little story or, or, or something with me. But uh, I just was so excited about the, the whole weekend that, that we were there. Everything was just so, so, uh, so many unexpected moments and, and memories there uh, that I absolutely was was thrilled to um, to be a part of. And I'd never been to the Disneyland Hotel before. So that was kind of an interesting experience to actually be at the Disneyland Hotel. And it was only, a, I think it was like a two and a half hour flight. So it was, it was so quick for us as well. Uh, just want to welcome Carlos uh, to uh, the the podcast tonight as well because we are going to be wrapping up soon but you know I have not always um let's just say I'm, I'm a Walt Disney World girl because my husband had introduced me and that's our park but I do have a special place in my heart for Disneyland. And I really, really wanted to do the tour walking in Walt's footsteps because I I just would have wanted to go to his apartment and, and get a feel for it. So I just have to remember, and this is for you guys too, that if you are heading to, to Disneyland, make sure you book that tour like a lot of months, weeks out because it does fill up fast. But you know, when I first walked in, to the Disney park, it brought back a lot of memories for me. <laughs> oh my gosh, getting sentimental here. But when I saw the lamp in the window above the fire hall, which was Walt's apartment, it really took my breath away and I really had to pause because the meaning behind that lamp being in Walt's apartment meant and if it was on it meant that he was in and I really felt the spirit of Walt there when I was there in front of that apartment and it would bring him great joy to sit by that window and see the people coming into the park and the expressions on their face it was just really really um a, a, an amazing experience I'm sure for Walt and if anybody knows anything about when you give someone something that makes them happy the happiness comes back to you tenfold and I'm positive that's how Walt felt the only time the lamp wasn't in isn't in the window is when they replace it with a Christmas tree at Christmas time because that's what Walt did he always had a little Christmas tree there as well Big welcome to Heather as well that has joined us uh, uh, as well tonight. So I just want to um, close tonight with just uh, sharing that that real moment with so many that came before us uh, to create Disney for the way Disney is. Uh, and, 
you know, the, the people like Sherry, the, the Mouseketeer that I will talk more about in another show, but little Margaret Carey, who was Tinkerbell and, um, you know, Mickey himself and, and Goofy and, and, and Walt and the animators, you know, I feel like I've been very privileged to have met some more of these legends this weekend and I hope to meet many, many more. With that, thank you so much, you guys, for joining me tonight and sharing in that surprise. As soon as I get off a podcast, I'm calling my husband because I'm still in shock. I've got to figure out how that all went down behind the scenes. But you know what, guys? I will see you next week. Uh, I want to say, oh, wait, I've got a caller. Steven is calling in. Let's take one call before I leave. Hey, Stephen, my gosh, just the 11th hour. Hey, how are you doing? I, I, I couldn't let you get away. Okay. No, that's great. Um, no, I just, wanted, I just wanted to let you know that it, I, I didn't get to follow you as much as I would like to have with your, with your trip down there. I got to see a pretty good bit of it. Yeah. But yeah, it was amazing. And thank you so much for sharing that because... Oh. All those people that you got to meet, it, it, it's, it's, it, they are wonderful people. Yeah. yeah. And I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't mind just sharing one quick thing. Oh, please do. Well, actually, please. Probably about four or five, but no. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, we can do 30 seconds for both yeah. or for four, but no, go ahead. Yeah. When you were talking about Margaret Carey, I got to meet Margaret at the expo, I think it was about six years ago. Oh, did you? And I was just, I was dumbstruck. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm just like talking to her and it's just her and I. Yeah. And she, I, I told her I am more of a Disney World guy. Yeah. And she looked at me and she said, no, you're a Walt Disney World guy. Yeah. So. I got formally corrected. And then it was like, since I was there on my own, and apparently I don't know how to dress in the morning because it was early in the morning. Oh. <laughs> she, she looks at my, my shirt and she, she starts adjusting my, oh. the neck of my sleeve and like that. And she's like, okay, you need, uh, all right, okay. And I, all right, you have to remember, I'm like 50 years old. <laughs> and I'm just standing there just like I was like eight. Yeah, yeah. And here I have Tinkerbell adjusting <laughs> my shirt. Isn't that fun? And I mean, I haven't met you people, yet, but she's tiny. She's just a I, little bitty thing, isn't she? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, she could. She didn't come up to my chin. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> She's just sitting there and she's adjusting my the, my label and everything Isn't on my shirt. Fun. She's, yeah, she she is an awesome, awesome she lady. She is, she is, and I just as I said, she like she's ninety years old and she's just a spitfire. Mm. You know, uh, I just I kind of put her up there with um, you know Betty White. You know those guys like they're yeah. they're just renaissance women that just keep going and keep going and have the energy and the positive outlook on life and uh you know i i had i there was really no breaks for me on sunday so i kind of like well i had to use the bathroom once in a while and i ran to, over to her chatted with her quickly <laughs> to get you know get the picture for alexi and uh, i said oh, i gotta go man my table and she grabbed my hand she's like him no you've got a woman your table <laughs> I've never been That's told right. that before, you know. Yes. <laughs> you she know? will let you know, and yeah. she's right. She will. She will. Um, one of these days, um, she, you know, she was on uh, uh, Andy Griffith's show on several episodes. Oh, really? I don't know if you knew that. No, I didn't. Yes. So every, every year, she comes down to North Carolina. There's like a Mayberry Fest. Oh. Um uh, up in, oh, I'm not even sure where it's at, but I have tried to make that thing six times in a row because she goes every year. I've never been able to make it. Oh, wow. But, but yeah, she's a firecracker. Oh, love, love her. I'm going to check that Andy Griffith show out because, I mean, that was just such a classic. And, uh, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, it's always fun to see little bits and pieces at the uh, primetime diner, right, at Hollywood Studios. 
<laughs> Isn't that fun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I enjoy that. Yeah. I, I those those I I love those old black and whites actually, and I'm really grateful, uh, you know, that that we can have a little piece of that history while we're eating dinner in you know our happy place, you know. Yeah. Uh, and for my last comment, yeah. I got to tell you about you know you being with I've met Bill and his wife. They are they are just fantastic. Aren't they? Too. Yeah. Yeah. It, you and, know what? Oh, but, yeah. go ahead. Oh. No, at the last expo, though, uh, twice I had two people come up to me and go, are you Bill Farmer? Oh, I can see why. Yeah. I can see why. Uh, uh, I just, I, I never thought about it, but yeah. yeah, okay. You can say, well, I'm his cousin or I'm his son or, you know, but oh yeah. yeah. The, the real, you know, it's interesting because those voices match their personalities don't you think yeah 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 i just think bill when he i don't know where i mean and, and a lot of the stuff he does he has to sing yeah i know and he know. does a fantastic job i know he really i heard him singing happy birthday <laughs> <laughs> Goofy yeah. singing happy birthday was absolutely incredible and mickey you know he, he was like do I sing happy birthday to me or who do I say? You know, and he did. Yes. But it was yeah. just, it was just really lovely to hear all of them up there. These, these four famous, famous voices harmonizing yeah. happy birthday. It was just such an incredible, unexpected yeah. moment, you know? Yeah. That's absolutely awesome. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. I'll just tell you something. So it was actually at the breakfast um we were sitting just at the table over from mike and patty and uh the people beside me it was so funny i thought gosh what a small world so michael who is the um he runs all of d23 he was right beside me we were having breakfast oh, yeah. yeah and right. his wife kristen and it's so funny because her we have a mutual friend um who I won't tell you more about him, but he is very good friends with Goofy and Tigger. And uh, he's got a really, really cool story in the fourth book. And uh, it, it was just really <laughs> fun to, you know, out of the hundred of whatever, how many people were in that ballroom for breakfast to end up, you know, right beside Michael and his wife, Kristen. It was just, <laughs> it was fun. It, it's the people you meet. And, and I met so many interesting people at the show as well that, uh, you know, um, is it, they're very unassuming. You don't realize and you know, they're, they're people from the studios and people from Lucasfilm and, you know, all these people that were at this show on Sunday. It was really, really fun. But anyway, Stephen, one of these days we will yeah. have to meet up. I really hope to meet you guys. Oh, absolutely. And we uh, happy Thanksgiving to Sheila. And I saw that she had a rotisserie chicken yeah. yesterday, so that's good. At least there's a little yeah. something going on. But uh, we... Uh, actually, uh, actually, she just walked in, and so I'll, I'll just tell her happy Thanksgiving please from do. fellow Canadians. Yes, thank you. And thanks for calling in. I was just about to All end right. the show. But you have a great week, okay? Great. All right, All right, we'll talk you to you too. soon. Okay, thanks bye. For the show. Yeah, job. thanks. Bye. All right, guys. Well, I guess that's it uh, for tonight. You guys have a great week. Uh, stay safe and be well. And we'll see you next week, five thirty Pacific, eight thirty Eastern time. Take care. Good night. <laughs>